So in part one, we looked at the speed editor and the cut page in real detail. But in this episode, we're gonna particularly focus on the sync bin. And I'm gonna show you some issues that I've had with syncing in there and how to fix them. And we're also gonna look at uh, multicam editing. So let's go and take a look. So we've seen the sync bin working when we've got two cameras on an interview, and you see how effectively that works and how easy it is to switch between two cameras. But what happens when we've got a lot more cameras? So let's import this one. It's called Jitterbug Riot. This is a nine camera music video shoot. And we're gonna go into the cut page. I've now imported that. And what I'm gonna do is sync these up using the same technique as we did before. But this time, this track here is the actual audio master track. So we're not gonna include that in our initial sync. So I'm gonna highlight these nine camera angles. I'm gonna hit this button here, it's our sync bin. And here is our nine cameras. So what I'm gonna do is highlight the audio mix. So each of these tracks has an audio file attached to it. So it's just the camera top mic, press sync, and it's gonna analyze that and sync all those nine camera angles up for us. There we go. So I'm gonna press save sync. And you get this icon here, meaning they are active in the sync bin mode, which is this button here. Now, the next thing I need to do is put, when, you, when you're working with multicam in the sync bin, you need to put one of the tracks down on a timeline. So I'm gonna create a new timeline. I'm just gonna right click here, say new timeline. I'm gonna use the current project settings because they're set to 24p. If this was a different frame rate, you can deselect that here, go to your format and choose whatever frame rate you want. So you can now mix timeline frame rates. I'm happy with the project settings and I'm gonna say JR and create. I'm gonna highlight that take off my video only and press append. So that's now brought that in with the wild audio track. So as you can hear, that's really poor quality. So let's get in the actual main audio mix that we've got. So the easiest way to do that is actually go into the edit page. And what I'm gonna do is literally take this, drag and drop it down anywhere I like on the timeline. And I'm gonna utilize the auto align function. So I'm gonna highlight all these, right click, say auto align clips based on waveform. So I'm gonna analyze that and it's gonna line those up for me. So let's press play. So that's great. All I need to do now is unlink the selection here, remove that audio track. And now we've got a clean audio mix. So back to our cut page. So let's go and trim off the front. So I'm just gonna go into my trim in. In fact, I can see the waveform down here is showing me exactly where I need to start. So I'm gonna trim in all the way up to there. So now if I go into my sync bin, we've now got all the nine camera angles at our disposal. So we can start off, let's start off with the drummer there. So camera seven, just hit camera seven. And I'm gonna say source overwrite. And what that's done is put a five second clip down of the drummer Ah, now what I did do was bring it down with the audio. So what I'm gonna do is undo that, double click. I'm gonna deselect, what, what happens when I'm, in, when I'm playing these nine camera angles, watch this. You hear all of these top mics at the same time, which is really annoying when you're trying to have a look at what camera you want. So the best way to get around that, video only. And now you hear the timeline playing back. So it's much, much nicer to work with. So let's scroll back to the beginning. I'm actually gonna start off the drummer, I think. So I'm gonna press camera seven and source overwrite. Hit my timeline so you don't see my nine cameras now, you'll see the main program. Right, at that point there, let's go to another shot. So I'm gonna press sync bin. Let's go to uh, camera three. And again, source overwrite or place on top even will work. Go to a wide at this point, so I'm gonna to go to my sync bin. And let's choose camera, let's go to camera nine. And source overwrite. Close up with the guitarist at this point. I'm gonna do this in a different technique. I'm gonna use the sync bin. And I want the guitarist here, so it's camera eight. So I'm gonna press camera eight. Keep my finger pressed on it and literally turn my jog shuffle, it literally paints it onto the timeline. So this is a really cool way of doing it. Press my timeline. Let's see what we've got so far. A 
Okay, so it's a little bit late on the guitar stab. So what I want to do is trim that back a little bit. So I'm going to trim it in. Just trim it back a little bit. So it's really quick and simple. If you want, you can in the live overwrite mode, you can actually go forward a little bit. If I press live overwrite, every time you double click, it will randomly pick a camera angle and drop it down onto the timeline in a random duration. So double click, double click, double click, double click. So it's just put down a few camera angles for me. Let's have a look at that. get a general idea. So I don't generally work in the random mode, but I just want to show you what all these buttons do. So we're in video only, choose the camera angle you want, either paint it on with the jog shuttle or source overwrite. So that's the sync bin. Now what I want to show you now is you can fall into a bit of a problem when you're trying to sync up your clips. So I just want to show you a problem that I had on a, on a real project and show you how I got around it. So I'm just going to change project. What I've got here is four clips. So this is a cooking reel that we're doing. And I've basically got here, this is a Canon C300, this is a Canon C200, this is a Sony A7S III, and the bottom one here is the overhead, it's a GoPro. And these are all in 4K, okay, so we're running uh, Ultra HD. So what I've done is created proxies for these so that I can play them back easier. I've left one off just so I can show you quickly how to do that. I've got my proxy header here, so that's not on by default, so you need to right click on the top here and select proxy. And that shows me whether I've got a proxy file or not. So I'm just going to generate a new one. I'm going to right click on the file that I want to make a proxy of. Hit generate proxy media. And that will now go off and create a proxy file to the dimensions that I've set it to in the project settings, which is currently set to half resolution ProRes 422. Okay, so once that's generated, it populates this column here. So I can see now that all four of these clips have got a proxy file attached to them. The other thing I want to do is take this camera angle here. Again, I've added this column myself. And when you use the sync bin, you can determine um, a camera number for each camera. Now, the reason you do that mainly is, A, I want to use it to get the correct order. So I, I actually want camera one to be this one, not this one. So let's just go in there. I'm just going to literally type one. And I'm going to put a camera two here. And this one's camera three and this one's camera four. Now the other advantage of doing this is that if you have, let's say for example, the Sony a7S III camera, this one, had, uh, while, the, while the thing was being recorded, if someone was pressing pause in between and the other cameras weren't on pause, this Sony a7S III may have like five or six different files attached to it. And by default, when you go to the sync bin, it's gonna think that they are different camera angles. So it's gonna put them into camera six, camera seven, camera eight, camera nine, when actually they all belong to camera three. So if you've got multiple shots that belong to one camera, you can group them here by putting a camera number on them. And that way they will stay with the correct camera number when you're doing your switching. So let's go to the cut page. And I'm gonna make sure the first thing I do is sort by camera. So now I've got camera one, camera two, camera three, and camera four, as I specified in the media pool. All right, so let's go and sync. And there's gonna be a problem with this. So I'm gonna sync here. And again, we're gonna sync by audio. So each of these clips has an audio track on it. And we're gonna say sync. So we've got an auto sync failed and it's failed on camera two. And the reason it's failed is because the audio is actually sat on tracks three and four and Resolve needs it to be on tracks one and two to perform the auto sync. So it took me a while to work that out, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So let's say okay to that. It's then going to sync up the three cameras that it can work with because the audio is on A1 and 2 on these three cameras. This camera here, the camera 2, in order to sync it up manually, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to select the camera angle here. I'm going to take off the sync lock and I'm just going to manually align it. Okay, and what we've got here is, if we look at our angles, we've got our clap, okay? So we can see here that camera one and camera three are lined up and camera two isn't. So here is our clap mark and we need to line it up here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just nudge it using my comma and full stop and we're nudging that in. Now that is accurate as far as I can tell. 
So it looks like it's accurate, but it's actually out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fine tune this. I'm going to save the sync. I'm going to fine tune this in the edit page. It's a little bit easier to work in. So let's go to the edit page. Let's now what you get is this icon that tells me that it's made a sync. This is my sync bin. Okay. So I'm going to actually put that into my source viewer. I'm going to go up to timeline. I'm going to swap timeline and source viewer. So what that does is put all of my source here on a timeline. V2 is unlocked because I've unlocked it in the in the sync bin. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to make sure that I'm linked here. I'm going to highlight track two. I'm going to zoom in to my sync and you can see here this is where I need to align. Okay, so let's just back that up. So I'm moving at a frame at a time and something like that. Let's zoom right in. And we're not quite there, so I'm going to go one frame forward. And one frame forward, one frame back doesn't actually line me up properly. You can see that here. We're not actually perfectly aligned. And a good little trick here, if you want to adjust the audio, you can do that at a tenth of a frame at a time. So if you press Option, Alt, and then left and right arrow keys, you can literally move the audio a tenth of a frame. So we line that up absolutely perfectly. Okay, once I'm happy with that, let's just swap that back. Go back to my cut page. And now what we can do is put down our main track, which is camera one. Let's click on that. Let's press append. That's in my timeline. I'm going to go to my sync bin. They are all now aligned. I'm going to go to my camera two. I'm going to say source over right. Let's have a look. Take camera two off. Go back one frame. There we go. We're perfectly lined up. So I could have fixed that before I go into the sync mode, which would have made life a little bit easier. All I'd have to do is go to the media page, right hand click on the clip that's got the audio on the wrong channels, go to clip attributes. And what I could do then is assign channel three to be audio track one and channel four to be audio track two. And then I can actually delete these two if I want. And then that way it would sync automatically because the audio is now assigned to tracks one and two. So I hope that's shown you how efficient this speed editor is with the cut page. Think about the source tape and smart insert, things like that, the sync bins. These are tools that are really going to get you editing super quick in your timeline. If you've enjoyed this, think about subscribing and look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.